he allowed her to get in there. And Peggy said to Ricky, I just decided that you will be my next patient. Unable to fit him into the limited space available, Claude Pierre convinced Ricky to accept a feeding tube. The liquid formula, his only nutrition for the next four months, would keep him alive and strengthen him for his admission to the clinic. Hi, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. Hi. Welcome back. This is more fun. You're in the country this time. How are you doing? Okay. You are, aren't you? <laughs> Hi, sweetie. You okay? You're a pretty brave lady. Look at all the work you did, huh? This is it. This is where we're supposed to be. This is where he's going to get this help. Up until then, there was absolutely no hope for Ricky. They told us that he would be dealing with this the rest of his life. <laughs> Within two weeks, Ricky faces a terrifying challenge. His first bite of solid food in six months. But he is lucky. He's getting expert help from Jane McCluskey, who just months ago was being hand-fed herself. Want to eat? Don't want to eat? Does that sound like a little boy to you who doesn't want to eat? You don't have to. But how come you can't? Hmm? I don't know. I just can't. You just can't, honey? If Minnie, your little sister, didn't want to eat, and she said it makes sense for me not to eat, what would you tell her? Hmm? I should be glad I want to stay healthy. She's good for you to be healthy? Okay, don't you think you deserve what Monique deserves, darling? Hmm? Why not? She's better. She's better than you are? What happens inside your head, love? Hmm? Just tells me not to. What tells you not to, darling? The voice. The voice does? What does it say? How does it tell you that? Bosses me around. It bosses you around? You know it bosses you around here? No. Are you finished with it? You won't let anybody boss you around anymore. Would that be okay? How about you hold on to me and you poke me and squeeze me rather than me around? Can I do that? Or Jane. You can hold Jane's hand, okay? That's what we'll do. You hold Jane's hand. We could never have envisioned this scene last fall. Jane, utterly disabled and dependent then, sharing so much hope today over bananas and yogurt. Ready for this? Now you have a choice. Would you like to feed yourself or would you like me to help you the first time? Okay. Close your eyes, open your eyes. You can look at Jane. <laughs> Make it easier if you look at Jane. You tell him why it's okay, Jane. It doesn't do you any harm. It's good for you. Just let you do all the things you want to do. It's okay, sweetheart. It's okay, darling. Do you remember having bananas when you were a little boy, sweetheart? And did you like them? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you like to feel exactly how you felt when you were a little boy? When you were happy? Remember being happy, darling? We're gonna make that happen again, okay? Right. Ricky still has a long way to go, but at least he's got a bed at this clinic. Keeping it small to maintain quality care has been agonizing, especially after the exposure from our program. After the thousands and thousands of letters we received, I feel so joyous on one hand, but burdened on another. Suddenly, I was in a position of playing God. I had to choose between people who were dying, and that's a terribly difficult choice. It's an impossible choice. Today, Claude Pierre is slowly expanding, thanks largely to contributions from viewers who saw our first report. She's added another house, doubled the number of patients to 22, and now has a staff of 80 care workers. One of the things that was so beautiful was the intimacy. It's still there. It's still there. It's wonderful. Still, her extraordinary attention to each individual remains the key to this amazing clinic. Hello. Hi, sweetie. 
And for parents of a son who has performed the simple act of eating food, that is nothing short of a miracle. There's just nothing to say to show how we feel. I mean, we can't get back your kids. You know, and that's what she does. She gives them back to us. And that's pretty. What can you say for that except thank you very much? What's his prognosis? Oh, he'll be fine. Come back in a few months. He'll, he'll go quickly through this thing. You are always so confident about this. I am confident about it. I'm, I know what, I, what material I'm working with. I know these children. Hi, kiddo. I told you we'd do it. And they're wonderful. They're just so special. The success is remarkable, and yet what is it that Peggy Clopier does that a loving parent doesn't try to do? Well, uh, parents give a lot of love, but what she seems to understand is that um, there are these voices, that this is a condition that, that, that is out of control. It's not as if the child has done this on purpose, and what she is saying is, I hear you, I listen to you, and you, you heard um, Ricky's mother make the point that he bonded with her immediately because he understood that she knew exactly what was going on inside his head, and that's the key. Most people haven't got a clue what's going on inside their heads. Lynn, for the hundreds or thousands of parents who wonder what maybe do we do wrong as parents blame themselves, do they have any idea what causes this? There are many kids who are perfectionists who don't become anorexic. Absolutely true, and Barbara, that's the mystery. Um, this condition cuts across class lines, gender lines, nationality lines, uh, but they don't yet know what it is that sets the child off to get to this point. Uh, the data have not been collected, so that's the big mystery right now. Is the medical profession paying any attention to her? Children? Medical profession is dying to know more about it. Peggy wants to start a school. She's writing a book and open more clinics. Fascinating. Thank you.